What's going on guys? Regina and I are out here in the desert for the maiden voyage of the Jeep Gladiator and the Patriot Campers X3. And it's probably gonna get a little chilly tonight. Yeah, so, I, I came prepared. Yeah, I think we're ready to go. We should be fine. But look, uh, I tell you guys all the time that if you buy a new off-road vehicle that before you put a lift kit on there, bigger tires, all the things, <laughs> just get out and use it in stock form. And that's what we're gonna do over the next couple days. Regina's probably gonna do most of the driving, but I'm hoping I get As some usual. seat time. Yeah, yeah, it'll be good. Right. I'll be running around with the camera, but we are going to go find camp. Uh, we're going to set up camp. We're going to kind of go through all the motions, use everything possible on the trailer to make well, sure it I works right. if I'd known that, I would have brought the shower. Yeah, well, okay, we didn't bring the shower. <laughs> it's one night. But we're going to use everything else, and you're going to cook up some pretty incredible meals. What do you got planned? Yeah, well, tonight, something nice and hearty. Take the chill off, and tomorrow for breakfast, it's going to be a little nod to the holidays. Also, while we're out here, we're actually going to go really deep into the desert to an area that I have not been into and there what? is there's some, an area you haven't been is, to here <laughs> there's some actual there's two super cool historic spots out here that i just recently okay. learned about and okay. i think you're gonna and love checking them out i'm excited to go it's see history of course i'll love it hopefully fingers crossed we can find them but we need to get going because yeah, the sun's already set yeah let's yeah. go <laughs> Winter time in the desert is the best time to come out here and explore. And this afternoon, it's the perfect weather for getting our new Jeep Gladiator dirty. This is its first shakedown run. And while I don't anticipate there to be any issues, just getting a feel for how it performs out here on some washboard roads, a few technical sections and some tight turns will give us a better understanding of what this setup is capable of and what its limitations are. We're not going to take it easy this trip. We're gonna push it just a little and see how the truck and trailer perform together. There are lots of plans for this Gladiator build, but I'm gonna take a bit of time with modifications and appreciate the upgrades a few at a time before moving on to the next ones. I'm not gonna do this entire build all at once. There was one small issue I was having on the way here and I need to sort it out, but let me explain here for just a moment. So I told you guys, she's gonna get all the seat time today. How, how's the Gladiator feel? Fun, yeah. I'm practicing my backing yeah. up too. Yeah, every time we stop, she's backing up. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I'm starting to get it. Yeah, you're doing great, actually. You're doing really good. Uh, look, on the way here, uh, I had to make a change to something, and this is all kind of part of the shakedown run. So, this Jeep Gladiator did not come with the Mopar aux buttons installed, and so I installed, just a couple days ago, an S-Pod, specifically because we're gonna be doing a lot of uh, accessories on the outside but more importantly right now I needed to be able to charge the trailer while I'm driving but I was having a little bit of a challenge and so what I want to do now is check and see if it's working so what I'd like to do is we can pull over really quick let's check it show, tell these guys what's going on and then maybe I get to drive maybe ah perfect it's working okay so here was the challenge I was having is I would hit the button for charging the trailer. Now I ran some pretty thick gauge wire that all attaches to an Anderson plug and then that Anderson plug attaches to the Red Arc Manager 30 system and it charges the batteries while we're driving. And so when I would hit the button on the S-Pod, it would actually shut off in about 30 seconds. And so there's something wasn't right. And so what I did was I noticed that the S-Pod was sending about 35 amps which exceeds the limit of the S-Pod and it was triggering off. And so what I did is I used the configuration tool for the Red Arc system and told it to only draw 20 amps. And now it seems to be working. The problem is, is that I just need to fine tune a little bit. Maybe I could try 25 amps or 28 amps, the most I can get without it tripping the S-Pod. But at least now we're charging while we're driving. All right, I get to drive now? Maybe. Okay. I have to admit, guys, it's good to be behind the wheel of a Gladiator again. I've missed this. Uh, definitely something about a long wheelbase. Pulling a trailer do it, does it just great. Although, it definitely needs some bigger tires. Yeah, I kind of miss the 392. I mean, we still have it, but I don't know. When you step on the gas and you pull on a trailer, it just goes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, look, we were going through the <laughs> canyon and it just was puttering through there. It wasn't roaring through there, but we're doing just fine. I mean, we're keeping the speed we need to keep. But I will say we need bigger tires. Bigger tires make for smaller holes. And let's be honest, the Gladiator just 
doesn't look great on stock tires. So I think a lift and uh, bigger tires will be in the pretty near future, but we're gonna use it a few more times in stock form. But look, uh, it's winter time and the sun is going down a little bit faster than I anticipated. So uh, we were gonna go check out a uh, Kumeyaay Native American spot uh, this evening, but I think what we'll do is we will do that in the morning. You don't wanna go hiking in the dark? Uh, no, I don't no. want to go hiking in the dark. Plus, I don't want to go set up camp in the dark. Well, why? It's easy. You just push the button. That's true. <laughs> it is pretty easy. But I think what we'll do is we will go visit that spot in the morning. I can't believe that I didn't know about this. And then there's another spot, which I'll tell you more about tomorrow. But right now, uh, we're stepping on the gas. Even though You're... we're trying to step on the gas and get to camp before the sun's. on the bottom and I'm sure other people tried to explain this to me but having him demonstrate it helped. If I want the trailer to go right, I go right. If I want it to go left, I go left. Easy peasy. So I want it to go a little bit to the right. Oh, helps if I put it in reverse. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Okay, now we're gonna go a little bit left so I stay in the trail. Yeah, yeah, it's doing what I want it to. Straighten it out a little bit. Now I want it to go a little bit more to the right, so I move it to the right. Oh, wait. Guys, it's official. The Gladiator now has pinstripes, and so does the trailer. What? <laughs> Just talking about our pinstripes. <laughs> it in. You're good. Come on, you can come on through. How bad are the pinstripes? Uh, you know, they'll, they'll <laughs> buff out a little. They're not terrible. But you know, I'm just adding some character, yeah. breaking it in. I just like to point out that the pinstripes on the Gladiator and the trailer were only performed by one driver, and that was not me. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is uh, this is a great camp spot, guys. We found this spot um, last year, yeah. and uh, it's gorgeous. We're not going to tell you where it is because yeah. this is kind of our hidden gem. If you find it, you've earned it. You find it, you've earned it. But uh, it's a great spot. Now we're going to set up, which thankfully it's not dark, but we should be able to set up pretty quick here, and then uh, we're just going to start doing.
All right, guys, we got camp all set up. It took us a little while longer. The woods were a little rusty, but uh, we're figuring all out. I do need to make sure that uh, I have the tongue higher. We had to actually put the back of the truck up on some rocks, and the pole is hitting the truck bed. So I got to sort that out. But right now, we got a glove in there, so it won't scratch the truck. But everything else is set up, looking good. Regina wants to show you guys the inside, so let's go take a peek. So we're just setting up the inside, just move the pillows around. We store them here so it folds down nice and neat. And this nifty little mesh covering keeps all of our bedding in place. It is very nice. So it's practical. And uh, we leave our bedding on all the time except when we wash it. And what is, uh, what's your bedding secret, hon? <laughs> uh, it's called a Betty. No affiliation or sponsorship. I just saw it on a commercial and loved it. And it's basically regular bedding um that it fits on like a fitted sheet and it zips the top of it zips so to make your bed all you have to do is zip it up in the morning um, and when you crawl in you can unzip it like a sleeping bag but you um can stick your feet out it's got this nice little nubbly blanket like a sheet and it's just warm and cozy yeah i'll verify guys it is super comfortable <laughs> and it's very warm it is i think we're all set up i think so and you already got the kitchen going, slicing yep. some bread. What's yep. the dinner plan? So I'm going to make soup because it's a chilly night and soup is always good and we love soup. It's a vegetable beef macaroni soup. It's kind of one of those things that you can throw in different things, whatever you have in your fridge. And then I sliced up some bread and I'm going to try this new stove. It's got a toaster feature, so I can only do a few pieces at a time, but we'll have some warm toasty bread to go with our soup for dipping. Guys, what you don't know is me and the boys <laughs> love, love Regina's soups. She does an amazing job and tonight is going to be the perfect night for soup. I can't think of a better meal to have at camp than soup on a cold night. Hun, oh, this smells so good, thank you. That's hot. Do I make soup any other way? You know better. Come on now. Oh, that's good. A little bread to dip it in. This is perfect for tonight. It's gonna be cold tonight, guys. It's gonna be a winter desert evening, but <laughs> I bet people in Michigan are laughing. Yeah, at us. <laughs> they are. It'll be in the high 30s probably tonight. But we're gonna turn the heater on in the tent, and um, it's gonna be a nice night.
I saw you working on that last night. Yep. What's the breakfast plan? It is uh, overnight French toast, but it's eggnog French toast with a maple butter brown sugar topping. So how long is that going to take for? Um, probably about 30 minutes or so. So I've learned with the Omnia, just cooking it on low and slow, just disregard all the cooking temperatures, just put it on low and slow and it, everything usually turns out perfect. Well, Regina's got breakfast cooking back there and it already smells really good. But I wanted to take a minute and talk about Starlink because we get a lot of questions and comments about using this. And we've had it for about a year now. We bought it, got the RV package, and have used it in a variety of different places. And honestly, we really enjoy being able to take it with us. And I know there's some folks out there that like, oh, the whole point of going out here is to be off the grid. And you know what? I absolutely get that. But there are times when you have to be connected, whether it's for video meetings or phone calls, or you got some important emails you're waiting on. And this allows us the freedom to be able to come out here and still do some of that stuff. Now, sometimes we will not bring it on purpose or we'll just turn it off and just enjoy the evening, but there's times that this thing becomes a big asset to us and it allows us to come out here often. Now, we are running this off of the inverter and it actually sips power it doesn't use a whole lot but there is a 12 volt conversion that you can get for this then that way you don't have to turn on the inverter also starlink works really really well out here in wide open areas like this we have had some challenges when we're in the forest that it just sometimes won't get through the trees i mean there is a very long cord so you can put this thing pretty far away from camp if you can find an opening and sometimes that'll work but there have been times where it's just been too thick in the trees and it didn't work well for us but all in all we really do enjoy having the Starlink and uh, it's an asset uh, that we appreciate so there you have it all right I'm gonna go check on breakfast Uh, you know, bacon and eggs is one of those really traditional smells at camp that you kind of look forward to. This is way better <laughs> smelling. It smells like the holidays. Mmm. Oh, that's good. I thought it was going to be a little oversweet, but no, that's perfect. Yep. Oh, that's good. It, it turned out pretty good, if I do say so myself. It turned out pretty good, Not guys. a traditional camp breakfast. It requires a little planning and you know, space in your fridge to chill it overnight, but It was yeah. a little, little work this morning, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pop it on the grill. Oh, peas. This is good, guys. We're going to enjoy the morning, pack up, and then uh, we've got two points of interest we're, uh, we're seeking out today. So. Too bad you can't come over. I have leftovers. <laughs> Maybe not. I'm not done. This is only my okay. first. <laughs> That breakfast was incredible, and it's one I will be requesting again for sure. It was so good. After enjoying the morning, we packed up camp and began making our way deeper into the Anza Borrego Desert. Where we are heading is a very remote area filled with lush desert vegetation that was once inhabited by the Kumeyaay Native Americans thousands of years ago. The Kumeyaay lived in harmony with this challenging desert landscape and skillfully utilized the resources around them, including something we just came across a few miles down the trail. All right, guys, we just stopped on the side of the road because we saw these yellow and green things over here. We're like, we got to check these out. What, what do you think those are, huh? They're like little squash, but they're round. They're almost like little pumpkins. It's fall, so I guess that's the season, huh? huh? Yeah, they're all attached to this vine that's kind of withered and dried. We cool. saw some back there too, yeah. so I have no idea what they are. Huh. These are kind of neat. I wonder if they're edible. I would imagine they are. Maybe like the kumiai used to eat uh, them. Oh, maybe, huh? Huh. But I've never ever in all the years coming here seen these. No. These are what are known as coyote melons, and while they are edible, they have a very bitter taste, and it's unlikely that the kumiai ate them. But it does seem that coyotes will eat them, hence their name. The kumiai did use these for cups, they were used as musical instruments, and they can be dried and used in soaps, but you're not going to want to make pumpkin pie out of these guys.
right, everyone, we've made it to our first stop, and this is what's called Split Rock Petroglyphs. And I have driven past here once a long time ago, and I had no idea there was anything here. And so we're gonna go see if we can find some of the petroglyphs, but there's also something else super cool hopefully we'll find here as well. The Split Rock is a very interesting structure, and you have to look pretty hard to find the petroglyphs, but we were able to spot a few of them. What lay next to the split rock is almost just as interesting as the petroglyphs. Did you see all these holes? This is where they probably, like a mortar and pestle, like the one I have at home that's smaller, just grinding corn or whatever it is they ground. That must have been a lot of hard work because it's not easy to do that. And this hole is really deep, so this one must have seen a lot of use. But yeah, you know, just a mom doing her thing, kids, you know, drawing pictures on the rock, making petroglyphs. Huh, pretty cool. I imagine this rock was a pretty well-known landmark by the Kumeyaay just because it's so unique. And who knows, maybe there were hundreds of them living right here in this area we are standing thousands of years ago. I'm really glad we stopped here today. Okay, now we need to go navigate some tighter and more technical terrain to get to our next stop, which I think might actually be even more interesting than the split rock. Close. You made it though, I was watching carefully. <laughs> this section of the trail was steep, rugged, and had some tight turns. And when you are a long wheelbase with a trailer in tow, some of it was really technical. But Regina skillfully navigated through all of it and I didn't have to spot her once. She crushed this part of the trail. Eventually, we arrive to our next destination, and this will require us to leave the Jeep and trailer behind and head out on foot for a little bit. All right, guys, we are deep into Anza Borrego, and Regina did an amazing job navigating the now longer Jeep, Gladiator, and the trailer through that you, little canyon. We need a lift and bigger tires. We definitely need a lift and a bigger, <laughs> bigger tires. I think we scraped a couple times. All right, we are at destination number two. Now, we have to get on foot a little bit and head down this way and fingers crossed, I don't get us lost, and we were gonna see something really unique from 1920s, pretty cool. One of the things that's great about this new Gen 2 trailer, as we're gonna go do this hike for a little bit, I have a little peace of mind that one click, the trailer's locked. How nice is that? All right, we're heading out this way. All right. I may have taken a wrong turn Maybe. on our little hike here. You're not supposed to get us lost. That's my job. <laughs> <laughs> but we are on we are on track now. We got about three quarters of a mile uh, to get to this old cabin. And there's some really rich history here, but they did some cool things near the cabin that I'm hoping are still standing and we can check out. Uh, I don't know anybody personally that's been here and I had actually had to do a little bit of research to find out about this place, but it's what's called Harper's Camp Cabin. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about it as we get closer. 
and we're all going uphill. Yes, we are. So we might be out of breath by the time we get there. <laughs> The Harper's Cabin that we are in search for was built back in the 1920s by two brothers, Julius and Ambie Harper, and they were involved in cattle ranching. And here is the first piece of evidence we found that we are on the right track. All right, we got this little concrete structure with a pipe running to it. And I wonder if this was maybe a water trough for the cattle. So they were raising cattle back here in the 1920s, and this would have been a good water collection area for those cattle. It's the only thing I can think it is. Just a little farther down the wash, and Regina spotted an old fence post with some rusted mop wire attached to it. So now we know we are heading in the right direction. But first, we had to climb our way up a very steep rock wall. This was a bit harder than it looked. I'm going to uh, I think scurry our way up here to the left and then up and over. I think we'll be okay. You got it? Maybe. I don't know. Nice and easy. I still need to update the amount of my life insurance policy, but I guess it's a good thing I didn't do it before this. There you go. All right, nobody fell. All our ankles were intact, so that's good. But we do have to go back down that way. Once we got to the top, there was some more evidence of some ruins up here. I think we're getting really close to the cabin now. So I see lots of footprints over here. And yep, there it is. There is the cabin that they kind of built into the side of this wall. What a crazy place to live. And how small is this? Just two brothers living here in this cabin, in the desert, raising cattle. It's pretty crazy to think about. The work that the Harper brothers did to carve out this rock to build their cabin, and then just getting building materials and supplies all the way out here in the middle of nowhere, was truly an incredible feat. Living out here in the heat of the scorching desert summers, enduring the strong winds that blow through here in this area, and just living off this desert landscape must have just been incredibly hard. But they were not just living out here, they were raising cattle. And that in itself has a challenge. How do you supply water for cattle in a desert? Well, they built something that is also pretty amazing. Here is one of two dams that the brothers built. And it's crazy to think about. Their objective here was to dam the water that would run down this wash, and then they would have stored water for their cattle. The problem is, is that this is a sand wash. And so these eventually filled up with sand and they failed. There's another one supposed to be further up the trail, but it's just, it's crazy to think about that they built this. I mean, look, in 1920, there was no roads or trails to get out here. These guys were probably bringing this back in on horseback and just, just brute force, honestly. And to build something out here like this is pretty remarkable for two people to do. I'm sure at the time the Harper brothers were building this, it seemed like a great idea. And I wasn't able to find out any information about how long the dams actually held water before they filled up with sand, but I'm sure it lasted a while for them. But what an interesting find out here in the desert. This was absolutely worth the hike today. But now we've got to make our way back and climb down very carefully that rock wall right, we climbed down. I think I can just slide down. Careful. Yeah, it was easy. <laughs> So, hon, was that worth the hike? That was. That was a lot of fun. Pretty crazy that all this kind of stuff is out here and haven't seen it before. I mean, it's America. We don't have all the castles and cool history that, you know, a lot of other places have. But, you know, we've got Native American, you know, artifacts and, and history here. So, there's cool stuff. Yeah. Now, it's lunch time. We're having a simple lunch, but a good one. What's, uh, what's so special about this lunch? Chips and salsa. And the best salsa in the whole world. Because we get it from a... Farm stand right by our house. Oh yeah, it's so good. It's guys. fresh. Guys. The absolute best salsa in the world. I could literally eat that entire tub by mm. myself. You have eaten an entire I, tub. I, by, I, I probably I went have. For salsa. I'm like, where's the salsa? <laughs> I just bought it. It's so incredibly good. Look, uh, this shakedown run has been a lot of fun. And uh, what's been really cool for me is 
You know, I've been coming out here for a long, long time. And we saw two things that I have never seen before. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. Well, this place is kind of massive. I mean, it's it a big desert. So yeah. there's probably even more stuff we haven't yeah. explored yet. It just it just gets me excited to know that there's still stuff I can come out here and find. I'm not doing the same thing over and over. And uh, look, the gladiator and the trailer, uh, we found a couple little things that we had to figure out. But mm -hmm. all in all, it was a good shakedown run. And I think we're ready for some bigger, longer trips. But I think a lift and bigger tires uh -huh. uh, coming down that canyon he yeah, scraped yeah, a couple uh, times yeah a few times yep not my fault no nope. but it is a really good setup i think it's a great setup for us it's a great setup for long adventures and it works for although uh, when you turn it on it just doesn't growl at you <laughs> you, you got to get over it <laughs> but <laughs> gotta i get like over that it. sound yeah well maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll make it sound a little more tough i don't know we'll see okay anyway guys We've had a lot of fun out here. If you have never been out to Anza Borrego, put it on your bucket list. It's an amazing place. If you haven't been over to trailrecon.com, check us out over there. we got all kinds of stuff to outfit your next adventure. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video.